Hello and welcome to tutorial 1, Creating and Solving Vector Graphs, presented by Navability. This tutorial shows the first step in decomposing a complicated problem like interacting robotics into easily di digestible and programmable steps. You will learn how to create, solve and explore vector graphs, as well as what variables, factors and priors are. We will be looking at the Python version of the Navability SDK. Please go have a look at the welcome video if you haven't already. It provides an introduction, typical applications and some background to this tutorial. We continue with the warehouse robotics scenario sketch in the welcome video and will show a simple robot driving around in a square with odometer readings and sightings to a landmark. To start, what is a factor graph? In robotics, we often come across optimization problems such as calibration, localization, tracking and mapping. These kinds of problems can be represented and solved effectively using the graphical modeling language known as factor graphs. Factor graphs provides a common language to describe an underlying estimation problem in a way both humans and computers can easily understand. Factor graphs consists of two types of nodes namely variables and factors. The nodes are connected by edges according to how they interact. This sketch illustrates a simple example with variables, the larger circular nodes, and factors, the square nodes. We will get back to variables and factors later, but since this is an interactive tutorial, let's dive in and navigate a robot. First, we need to load the packages. We make use of Navability SDK, for interacting with the factor graph and NumPy for matrices and calculations. If you run this code yourself, you might need to first install these packages as shown in this block. Now that we have the required packages, we are ready to build our factor graph. We first create a new Navability HTTP client and a client that indicates the user, robot and session that will be used for our new factor graph. Next, we add a new variable to our factor graph. Variables represent unknown states that the user wants the computer to estimate, such as the position or orientation of some equipment, the position of landmarks in the environment, or maybe hidden calibration parameters that are difficult to measure directly, and potentially many, many more. Our solution already provides a library of standard variables and factors that require zero mathematical input from the user. Yet, the technology rapidly supports building of new variables and factors. We start with a pose to variable, that is position and orientation in two dimensions. To add variables to our factor graph we created above, call add variable with the label x0 and the type pose2. Add variable runs asynchronously and returns a result ID that we can use to wait for the variable to be added to the factor graph. We now have a factor graph with one variable, but to solve it we need some additional information. This is where factors come in. Factors usually represent the interaction between sparse variables based on some measurement data. This is where basic maths and measurement functions are included and used during computation. For example, the distance from one point to another, that is a range factor, encoder measurements from wheels, ranges from a laser, or tag readings from a camera. The variables associated with factors are depicted by the edges emanating from it. Later tutorials will show how to handle low confidence, ambiguous and strange measurement scenarios. In this example, we need the estimated starting point of our robot. We use unary factors called priors to represent absolute information to be included about that variable. For example, a GPS measurement. In this case, we use prior pose2 as our variable type is also a pose2. Priors can be represented by distributions. Here we create a multivariate normal distribution using the full normal function to create a prior pose2 factor with zero mean and a covariance matrix as seen here. We can look at the factor graph we have so far by using the generated link in the Navability app. And note the variable node x0 and prior factor node x0 f1. 
The prior is now connected to the variable x0, but it is not initialized yet. Automatic initialization of variables depend on how the factor graph model is constructed. We will be using automatic graph-based initialization here. X0 is not initialized since no numerical solution has yet been computed. We do this as the future intentions of the user are unknown and the initialization of X0 is deferred until the latest possible moment. By delaying initialization of new variables, say X0, until a second newer uninitialized variable, say X1, that depends on X0, the algorithm can initialize X0 with more information from surrounding variables and factors. To demonstrate a relative factor, in this case our robot's odometry, we first have to add our new variable for pose X1. Then we can add a factor that connects our two robot poses X0 and X1 together to form a chain. Here we use a relative factor of type pose2, pose2, with a measurement from pose X0 to X1. The robot drove one unit forward in the X direction. So similar to the prior we added above, we use a full normal distribution to represent the odometry with mean and covariance as seen here. We now have a graph we can solve using the multimodal ISAM algorithm. The default solver will perform non-parametric inference or state estimation over our newly created graph. We trigger the solve by calling solve session with our client information. Fundamentally, inference is performed via the base junction tree, where Chapman called Molgorov transit integral solutions are based on marginal joint belief estimations, a sum product belief propagation approximation algorithm. Many benefits, such as clique recycling, are also available. See the solving graph section in the documentation for more detail. While the solve is processing, let's look at the factor graph structure again. As expected, we now have two variables, x0 and x1, with a prior factor on x0 and a relative factor between x0 and x1. The Navability web app allows visualization of the belief state over any of the variables. In the app, use the Show Belief button to see the underlying variable estimates in more detail. Also try the belief and distribution buttons to see more of the underlying posterior marginal belief estimates. So what is happening? The figure shows the position and orientation of poses X0 and X1, as well as the covariance ellipse. Since the solver used was non-parametric, the covariance ellipse is based on a best Gaussian distribution fit of the full belief. A few other functions are also handy for interacting with the factor graph. For instance, get variable returns the full variable. Or if you are interested in the suggested parametric point estimates, you can get this from the PPE data as shown here. What are parametric point estimates and beliefs? A PPE can be the maximum or mean of a belief. If the belief is a normal distribution, both corresponds with its mean. However, Care should be taken with using PPEs when beliefs might not be parametric. For example, in a multimodal belief with two peaks, max corresponds with the maximum of the two peaks, while the mean will fall somewhere in between them. In non-parametric cases, it is better to work with the full belief obtained by the kernel density estimate. Kernel density estimation is a non-parametric way to estimate the probability density function of a random variable. With the default solver, a full probability density function is always available and can be visualized as shown by the distribution plot feature in the Navability web app. Non-parametric solutions will be discussed in more detail in tutorial 2. In our example so far, the graph models the position and orientation of your robot at any given time. Next, we will add a new relative measurement to a landmark using a different sensor but captured in the same factor graph. So far, we worked with the pose to factor type. Among others, Navability SDK also provides the point to variable type and the pose to point to bearing range factor type. We will use it to represent a landmark sighting in our factor graph. We will add a landmark L1 with bearing range measurement with a zero radian bearing and a range of 0.5 units and the variances as shown. 
Next, we continue our robot trajectory by driving around in a square. Let's solve the graphs so along, and while we wait, go have a look at the new vector graph structure. We now have a longer odometry chain with one landmark sighting. If we go back to the geometric visualization, we will see automatic updates as more of the solution is published. Once solving has completed, the variable results can be looked at in various ways. Here we are just looking at the PPE values, but the full posterior marginal beliefs are available by simply asking for more results. Next, we want to add a loop closure. As expected, the robot continued its square trajectory to the end of where it started. To illustrate a loop closure, we can add another bearing range sighting from pose X4 to landmark X1. Solve the graph and plot the new results. You may have noticed X4 updating as the solve finished after we added the loop closure. With the factor graph now solved, the final results are already in the Navability app. You can use the Navability app hamburger menu on the left to navigate between graph and geometric map visualization. You can also use the global filter menu on the right to set which information to visualize. Let's filter our graph to only show the variable x0. Go to the filter menu at the top right. Select variable label starts with, enter x0. Zero. And there you have it. Only X0 is now visible. That's it for tutorial 1. Thanks for watching. The next tutorial will give an introduction to non parametric solutions. If you need additional resources, have a look at the Caesar documentation. There you'll find information on manifolds used for variables and factors, a guide to creating custom variables and factors, and more information on the base tree used in the core.